Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. If you don't know me, my name's Gavin and on this channel we do our best to try and help you get the most out of your DJI drone and other tech that I might review on the channel. So in this video I'm going to be doing a OcuSync versus Wi-Fi test. So we're going to be pitting the DJI Mini 2 against the DJI Mavic Mini and just see which one comes out on top in an urban environment. Now if you are expecting a long range test in this video. Sadly, this isn't a video for you. The reason being is in the UK, we are sort of restricted to 500 meters. So that is the maximum distance I go to in this flight. But still, you will see if you do continue watching this video that it does serve a really, really good purpose to show the benefits of OcuSync and why it's dynam dynamic channel switching can keep you a better, stronger signal more of the time than what the extended Wi-Fi can on the Mavic Mini. So let's roll this video then. It's going to be in two, two flights. First flight will be the Mini 2, second flight will be the Mavic Mini and there is one big feature of this uh, flight you're going to notice as well, highlighting the benefits of the extra power and wind resistance of the DJI Mini 2. So let's get into it now. Right everybody, so this is flight one. I'm going to go ahead and start the camera and then I'm going to take off. Take off. Right then, to make this a fair test, as we've started, you can see I am 50 meters up, and then I'm not going to deviate from that whatsoever. Okay. So let's just take a little flight out. Now, obviously, as I've mentioned in the intro, the whole point of this is to test out how good OcuSync actually is versus the benchmark on the DJI Mavic Mini with its usual standard Wi-Fi connections, no ability to switch within flight. So let's go for a little flight then. And what I want to do is I want to stick at a set height. 50 meters seems fine to me. We're going to go over these houses. And we're going to try and do a set route. Okay. So then I can do the same route with the Mavic Mini. And see how we get on. Okay. So already you can see there is a slight dip. But it's come back pretty quickly. And we're going to get to this. Here, and we're going to take a left turn. There we go, we're going to take a left turn, and this should be more than enough to induce any interference. Like I say, doing this nice little circuit over a densely populated area. So I can just see what happens because obviously, as you know, in the UK, we are limited to 500 meters. Well, many people think we are. Um, let's not go into it. Not for this video. People believe it's a hard and fast rule, but not so much. So there we go. We're going to take a left turn. Let's follow this road. And we're going to do pretty much the same, the same route. And this, this route doesn't need to take long. It's just about proving the concept and seeing how well OcuSync does in comparison. There we go. So they got a little aircraft signal interference message. And we've dropped signal a little bit there. And it's come back. So as you can see, we've done that little circle. And I've kept within 500 meters, so many people hopefully won't moan at me. And then what I'm going to do is get to this house here. And then I'm going to spin back round. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to land this drone and then I'm going to do the same flight with the Mavic Mini and see how well that does, just to show whether OcuSync really is worth it. So this is where you've got to be careful with the DJI Mavic Mini. So as you can see, I've left it on automatic and it's picked a high interference 2.4 gigahertz channel. Now everything tells me that that is wrong and it should be a 5.8 for the area that I'm about to fly in. But let's just see what happens when we leave it up to the drone. Let's start a recording. 
and we've got to take off. Take off. And let's see what happens using this 2.4 gigahertz channel, which the drone has picked by itself. There you go, look, like, really struggling with wind. Whereas let's get over these houses just like we did the last flight. See, so starting to get a bit of breakup. Already, and that's to be expected. Oh, look at that, almost unusable. We're 440 meters away. I can't even get the drone pointing straight to where I need it to go. That's that bad. Right, so, what did I just say? We shouldn't have been on the 2.4 gigahertz channel for where we're flying. But the drone decided it wanted to be on 2.4 gigahertz. So we're going to bring it back. We're going to land it. And we're going to switch to 5.8. And then see what happens there. Yes, so that wasn't very good, was it? So what we're going to do is we're going to switch manual. Okay, and I'm going to say, let's just say channel 165. Okay. And let's see how much better the drone does. All right, because you know, this drone can make mistakes and you need to pick the right channel for where you're flying. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off again. We've got a connection. There we go. Take off. We'll recommence the, the video here to get rid of that wind warning. So now we are on this 5.8 gigahertz channel. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see if it performs better. So we didn't get that far, did we? Uh, before it was completely unusable. You can see the map in the corner. I've done a few little uh, trial flights there and back, just testing out the wind as any reasonable, competent pilot would do, because it is a little bit windy today. Right then, so let's take this route like we did on the Mini 2. As you can see we're coping a little bit better this time but we have been absolutely battered by the wind as you can see but we are coping better there's no denying that so we're at this house again so let's just take a left there we go we're coping okay with the signal Get rid of that wind warning. So there you go, 464 meters. That wind warning's gone, and we've kept our signal just by choosing the right channel. Oh, there we go, we've got a little bit of a, a weak signal interference. Here we go. Right, so I'm going to take the same route. I mean, it's certainly not as strong as the Mini 2. It's a little bit of latency on the video feed. That's expected. But it's still coping not too bad at the minute. So we're following this road round just like we did on the last one. And we've still got them uh, five bars on the RC. Getting a little bit of lag and latency now. Still sticking at that 50 meters to keep the test completely fair. I think one of the major things is the fact that, as we've mentioned, you know, on the Mini 2 we didn't get the wind warnings. A massive drop out there, huge drop out. There we go, and we've lost the connection. Ah, well. So up until that point, it was doing about the same, and it wasn't doing too bad. So 
So sadly, go home. there we go. Right, so if I cancel that, now I've got a connection again. We we'll drop back down to 50 meters. So again, keep the test fair. Bit more lag and latency, as you can see. Whereas the Mini 2, we didn't have hardly any issues. But still, it's not done too badly. So if you do select a manual channel for your 500 meters, or if you're only flying out a couple of hundred meters, well, the Mavic Mini can still be used, but that's pro level sort of stuff. I've had to go in, I've had to manually select a channel. Right, so let's bring the drone home back to me then. Landing. Right. Do the old uh, back to the studio. Right, so what did you make of that? So I found it quite interesting. So absolutely 100% if you are a newbie drone pilot and you're looking for your first drone, the DJI Mini 2 just absolutely trumps the, the Mini 1 um, simply because of its ease of use. This drone, you can put a battery in it, you can plug your phone into your controller, you can go fly and no, you don't need to worry about anything. It's got slightly better wind resistance and it does have that OcuSync 2.0 with its manual switching, meaning that, as you saw in the video, it kept a connection, whereas the DJI Mavic Mini disconnected. Fair play. On the other side of the fence, you have the DJI Mavic Mini. Now, if you know how to really work this drone like I do, you can massively, you know, increase range and increase stability and safety, you know, to, to almost, you know, apart from the disconnection, it can almost cope just as good as what the Mini 2 can. Um, there's no denying that the wind warnings uh, were there on the DJI Mavic Mini, but also, you know, it has to be noted that despite the wind warnings and the fact that there was both getting blown about, effectively they're both right here in front of me and they both did make it back okay. Um, so you know, that shows that despite the wind warnings, the DJI Mavic Mini did get back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little play around um, and there will be a second follow-up video. So in that video, I am going to take away the OcuSync as such. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually put this drone on a 5.8 gigahertz channel. And then what we'll do is we'll compare and take it, take it away its ability to switch channels etc and just see how that does compare in that scenario and then what i might do is again just to stare that little pot a little bit is we might compare this flight that i've done on this where this one clearly won to the dji mavic mini with maybe say i don't know a, a nine pound range extender and just see what happens then again this is all for information and it's just good fun so thank you very much for watching. If you did find this useful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already, so you're notified when that follow video comes out. Thank you very much for watching and see you again soon.